Okay, so this is an introduction into database systems. And we're going to go over some terminology on, on what is a database? What, what do we need it for? Why is it important? Now, data are facts that are recorded and can be accessed. Now, there's different data formats. You know, there's text, numbers, figures, graphics of data, images, audio, video recordings of data, and more. Really, really everything is, is data in some type of format. You know, you can have your bank account. You know, there's data for your bank account. There's, um, you know, an Excel sheet. There's data inside it. You know, when you're, you know, there's just so many different examples. And, and data is recorded and kept because it's, it's considered um, to, be you, to be of use uh, to an intended user. So, you know, if you're collecting data for a, a job and then you have to present that information you keep it because it, it you know your intended user is a client or you know whatever you're you're presenting the data for now information refers to the data that is accessed by a user for some particular purpose so typically typically getting the needed information from a collection of data requires performing an activity so for example you have a bunch of numbers um, you know, and you need those numbers to be turned into information. Um, you know, and such as searching through, processing, or manipulating the data in some sort of so, some sort of fashion. Now we have metadata. Now, what is metadata? That's data that describes the structure and the properties of the data. You know, metadata is essential for the proper understanding and use of the data. So, you know, you have your metadata. And then you have your data. You know, metadata is a collection of a bunch of different information, or excuse me, data, and you turn that into data. You know, to be able to turn into information. Now, data without metadata. <clears throat> now, this is an example. Is you know, what is this telling us? You know, we have zero 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 one B two, and then you know eleven oh one. Now we can assume. You know that 1101 right here. Let me highlight this. Now we can assume right here that this is time, but but we don't know that though. You know it's in the format of time, but without you know the metadata, you know we're not going to know what this is. You know an example of this also. You know this can be some type of identification number. It could be an ID number that's you know referencing a product you know let's say the product is B and this could be the number of those products or how many were sold at this time but we really don't know that we, we don't know what this information is you know and with metadata you know you're gonna be able to see that this is a transaction ID from the previous slide. So now we know what this is. You know, the data before just was just a bunch of numbers and characters and letters, but we don't really know what it was though. You know, metadata is gonna show us that this is a transaction ID, this is a product, you know, this is the amount of items sold. And on the previous slide we previous slide we assumed that it was time, but it is time, you know, and it's an eleven oh one. So metadata is going to give us the information on how to interpret the data. And this is the data. This is the, excuse me for my bad handwriting, but this is the data. And the metadata helps, helps us determine what the data is. Okay. Now, what is a database? A database is a structured collection of related data stored on a computer medium. Now, the database organizes the data in a way that facilitates efficient access to the information captured in the data. So, database, think of it like a like a trash can. You know, all the information is stored in there, and it's going to help us be able to pick out the information that we need. And a database metadata represents the structure of the database. So a database content that 
that is not the data itself, you know, data about data. You know, it could contain names of data structures, data types, data descriptions, other information describing the characteristics of the data. You know, in a database management system, or abbreviated DBMS, is a software used for. Now, a, a DBMS could be, you know, Access or Oracle or a bunch of other type of actual database management systems. And it's used for the creation of databases, insertion, storage, retrieval, update, and deletion of the data in the database. Now, a database system is a computer-based system whose purpose is to enable an efficient interaction between the user and the information captured in the database. So a good example, again, is Access, Microsoft Access, which we're, most of us are familiar with. Now, this is a good example of a database. <clears throat> okay. Now this is the core. You know, this is the database. This is where all the information stored in a database management system can be access. You know, Microsoft Access. Let's just assume that this is Microsoft Access. Okay. MA for Microsoft Access. Now think of this as Microsoft Access and the database is all the information inside Microsoft Access. You know, and you have your front end application. You know, and this can be the user. You know, this is you accessing Microsoft Access to access the information, which is the database. Okay, and what is a what is a front end application? You know, provides a mechanism for easy interaction between the user and the database management system. And the end user, which is the users using a database system to support their tasks and processes. Now, indirect interaction is the end user communicating with the database through front end applications. And then direct interaction is the end user communicating with the database directly through the database management system. Here's an example. Okay, this is say this is you. You know, and you're a programmer, or you're the database administrator, and you're directly accessing the database management system. Okay. Now let's say you're not a programmer, you're just an employee, and you use a front end application, which could be, you know, you can create that in the access itself to be able to access the database management system. Now this is a good example if you are an employee, you know, at a, you know, let's say a, a Fortune 500 company, the company's not going to want you to be able to have direct access to the database to be able to manipulate the data inside the database management system. So they deploy a front-end application to where you can only collect or you know retrieve information from the database management system but you can't manipulate the data inside the database management system now steps in the development of a database system you know you have your database requirements you know what what are you needing you know you need to collect the information define you know, and visualize. So this is the starting process of, you know, think of like a building your own business and this is a business plan. What do you need? Okay, and then you need to model the database. You need to start to model it, you know, create it right on a piece of paper. You know, and from there you go to the implementation stage where you start to build it. You know, and you're also developing, you know, front end applications for indirect access, which could be for the employee, you don't want them to have direct access, you just want them to be able to retrieve information. That's what developing front-end applications is. Now, then you start to have the deployment. You know, deployment stage is where it becomes live. You're deploying it. Now, from there, you have the database use, which you, know, you have your indirect or direct use, which could be you know, the employee accessing it or the 
you know, the administrator accessing. You have your database administration and maintenance. So this is going to be your, your database management, you know, programmer or associate or someone that's going to maintain the database. Now, requirements, collections, definition, and visual visualization. Now, is the results in the requirements specifying which data the future database system will hold and in what fashion? So, you know, what are we creating is essentially what it's saying and what the capabilities and functionalities of the ba database system will be. You know, the collected requirements should be clearly defined and stated in a written document and then visualized. So you're, you're creating something from nothing. Okay, and the conceptual database model. You know, visualization of requirements by using a conceptual data modeling technique such as an entry relationship diagram or ER diagram. Okay, now this 